if you are after a genuine classic motorcycle and not something that just looks like a classic bike then this is it this is my royal enfield bullet 500 es machismo es because it's got electric start and machismo because it's a special model with chrome fuel tank and chrome bits here and there the engine technology dates back to pre-world war ii so it's a 500 cc air cooled engine with push rod and two overhead valves and it's an iron cast engine and the engine and the gearbox are separate unit unlike the modern unit construction royal enfield so that's the gearbox and that's the engine and they're separate units and because it's an iron cast engine it produces a very unique noise that's not present in the modern royal enfield that's the kickstart kickstart in this bike required a level of skill because you'd have to use the decompression lever to put the piston up um, to the top dead center i'll explain that later that's the uh, neutral finder something you don't see in modern bikes anymore so the neutral finder allowed the rider to go directly to neutral from second third or fourth gear didn't work from first gear but you could slam on that and go straight to neutral from second third or fourth on top of the gearbox is the air filter so that's the air filter box behind that is the toolbox and in front of the engine is the starter motor other than the basic light, light switches, the bike didn't have much. It only had a speedometer and an amp meter. I'll explain the importance of amp meter later. And two pilot lamps, classic to Royal Enfields. Uh, this particular bike has brake on the right side and the gear change lever on the left side, which is great because some of them came where the gear change lever was on the right side and it was much harder to ride. Uh, that's like old British bike. As you can see, um, the bottom at the, from the bottom of the cylinder, there's a pipe coming out. That's an open crankcase breather. Um, that's the amp meter. Now the crankcase breather has a pipe that goes on top of the drive chain, and it drops excess oil directly onto the drive chain. That's something. That's a very messy system, very oily, but that's how it was back then i guess uh, both the front and rear brakes are drum front brake is twin leading shoes um, which stop the bike better than single leading shoes but nothing like a modern disc brake the bike required three different types of oil the main engine oil on the left was the clutch box and the clutch needed clutch primary oil and the gearbox needed a mixture mixture of grease and oil um, that's the other uh, box um, this is for storage and that's the battery box now the the choke lever was directly on, onto the carburetor I'll show the decompression lever now before that I'll turn the ignition uh, because I'll need to show the use of amp meter so that's the decompression lever uh, by pulling the decompression lever you could release pressure from top of the cylinder and use the kick starter to bring the piston to top dead center that was required to start this 500 cc um, single cylinder engine so that's the kick starter you could slowly turn that those pipes there supplied oil to the um, head of the cylinder single carburetor now that's the decompression lever and that's the decompression valve so pulling that would release pressure from top of the cylinder and also this bike doesn't have electronic ignition or cdi it has point system so once the piston was on the top dead center uh, by using the kick lever uh, the amp meter would be straight in the middle and that's how you would know that the cb points are in the right position and the piston was in top dead center otherwise it was much difficult to uh, kick start and you could often get a nasty kickback that would hurt your legs um, so i'll turn the bike now and i'll start i'll use the start uh, the electric start to start the bike so should you get one well the bike produced around 20 horsepower 30 to 35 newton meters of torque and top speed with me on top was around 100 to 110 kilometers depending on what i ate for breakfast as you can see a lot of vibration um should you get one well 
if you are into classic motorcycles and if you are if this is your second third or fourth bike yes absolutely get one this this bike is a lot of fun should you get one as a daily ride my personal opinion no not really these bikes are too complicated too many things to go wrong too too old school and also you never knew whether the bike would start in the morning or not it's just got a temper of its own the foot pegs as you can see don't fold so if you turn too sharply they could basically dig into the road and you would crash that's that happened to me once uh, other than that if you want something that's genuinely classic genuinely pre-world war ii this is it in buy it and enjoy it Thank you.